Thank you for being a part of today's uh, Bible study in John chapter 18. Tonight at 7 o'clock, Brian English is going to be talking about this on the Maywood Facebook page. So I hope you get a chance to listen to Brian. I look forward to seeing your name listed among those who are listening to Brian. John chapter 18 concerns two trials, uh, one before the religious authorities and the other before Pilate, the secular authority. And yesterday I asked us if we would try to get into this story, to feel with it, by putting ourselves on trial. So this morning I took some time and I took the questions that were asked from yesterday's article, real-voices.com, and I listed those before the Lord and I prayed to him with the idea that he went through both trials and then a beating and then the crucifixion so that after I get through confessing these sins, I can be free and forgiven. So some of the things that I reflected on from the list yesterday were as follows. In gratitude, uh, I think too much about myself and too little about Jesus who was willing to experience all those trials for me. Uh, I could talk a lot about that. Lack of love for God. Now it's easy for me to ask for things in prayer but it's more difficult to truly worship Him. And so as I evaluate that, I think that reflects a lack of love for Him. Unbelief. Uh, every time I choose my own self-direction instead of following the guidance of the Spirit, I reveal my unbelief. I think if I believed more fully in God's love and His ability to lead my life, I would choose His leadership every time. Lack of love for people who are distant from God. The first church that I pastored was in a small town, and there were 142 people total in the town, and I was able to pray for everybody. And there were times when I would kneel by my bed and literally name every name in town and ask God to help them. The thought that came to me when I was talking to the Lord today was, why don't I use my address book on my phone to do the same thing? to pray for the people that God has placed in my life. Uh, one of the other items was neglect of family duties and the best witness would be my family. If they were to take the stand I think they would tell Jesus that I certainly could do better. And then the last one I thought of was neglect of self-denial. I'm happy to serve Jesus as long as the service is not too costly and it's something that I want to do. There have been times when I've served Jesus and still do, kicking and screaming all the way. We're now going to read verses 28 through 40. And again, I just want to read this so that we can get a picture of what Jesus went through for us. And as we confess our sins to him, he went through this, and then a beating, and then his death on the cross so that we could be forgiven. So let's get started. Verse 28. Then they led Jesus from the house of Caiaphas to the governor's headquarters. It was early in the morning. They themselves, they themselves did not enter the governor's headquarters, so they would not be defiled, so they could eat the Passover. Pilate went, out, Pilate went out to meet them and said, What accusation do you bring against this man? And they answered, If this man were not doing evil, we would not have delivered him to you. Well, Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and judge him by your own law. The Jews said to him, it's not lawful for us to put anyone to death. This was to fulfill the word that Jesus had spoken by what kind of death he was going to die. So Pilate entered his headquarters again and called Jesus and said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, Do you answer this of your own accord, or did others say it to you about me? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Your own nation and the chief priests have delivered you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would have been fighting that I might not be delivered to the Jews. But my kingdom is not from this world. So Pilate said to him, So you are a king? Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this purpose I was born, and for this purpose I have come into the world, to bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth listens to my voice. Pilate said to him, What is truth? After he said this, he went back outside of the Jews and told them, I find no guilt in him, but you have a custom that I should release uh, one man for you at the Passover. So do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? And they cried out again, Not this man, but Barabbas. 
that Barabbas was a robber. So yesterday, we took a scene of Jesus' trial, and we put ourselves on trial looking at the sins of omission. Those are things we should have done, but we didn't. Now today we're going to consider transgressions. God has clearly placed no trespassing signs in our pathway. And a transgression sign is to look squarely at one of God's no trespassing signs and disregard it. So again, if you do this, please put yourself before Jesus. Imagine that he has just gone through two trials. He is falsely condemned. He is going to be executed on the cross. And he did this so that when we list these sins, we can be completely and forever forgiven. So here's some of the lists that we can consider. One is a mind conformed to the world's system. In Romans 12, 2, we're told, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that by the testing you may discern what is the will of God, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. So here's our question. Is my mind molded more by the influences of the world around me or by knowing God's will? How about another one? Pride. Jesus highlighted the connection between pride and unbelief. In John chapter 5, verse 44, he said, How can you believe when you receive glory from one another and don't seek the glory that comes from the only God? Here's a question. Am I more concerned about what people think of me or with pleasing God? Well, another sin would be envy. Do I want to have the wealth, beauty, power, and possessions that I see in others? Do I desire the talents and gifts of others? but fail to be thankful for what God has given me? There's an answer. Number four, do I have a bitter or a judgmental spirit? Can I see the speck in the other person's eye but fail to see the log in my own? Note, criticism is not a spiritual gift. Slander, do I speak behind the back of people? Do I stand on top of other people to make myself look taller? What about lying? Do I deceive people for selfish reasons? Spend some time on a short question, long answer possibly. Hypocrisy. Do I want to appear to be someone I really am not? Am I a play actor unwilling to reveal who I really am? Number eight, robbing God. What do I do with my time, talents, energy, and money? Where do I waste what God has given me? participating in what is worthless or actually harmful? Good question. Number nine, hindering others. How have I kept others from fully following Jesus? Have I excused my bad behavior and maybe my friends so we both could live distant from God? In what ways have I led to their corruption and their guilt? Well, I hope you've gained some insight and appreciation for Jesus's great gift to us. Now, listing our sins is not intended to drive us to despair. Listing our sins is intended to drive us to Jesus, who, according to Paul, came to the world to save sinners. Thank God. I was a young preacher when I first completed this exercise, and when I finished doing it, both the sins that I, of omission and the sins that I did, those trespasses, I had several pages of notes on a yellow legal pad. Uh, I knelt beside my bed and I confessed each one of them to the Lord. Uh, and it took quite a while to do that. I took the pages of my notes out to our aluminum trash can at our home and I burned them uh, because I knew Jesus had forgiven them. They were completely forgiven and they were out of my life. That same day I was preaching in a neighboring town and the pastor and I walked the streets of that little village. It was Allenville, Missouri, just a little town with dirt and gravel streets uh, and he and I walked the streets of that town on a beautiful beautiful day and we stopped at a woman's home and we knew neither one of us knew her as we sat down Jesus led me to speak to her about a salvation and she began a relationship with Jesus that day thank God the next Sunday her husband her daughter her granddaughter were all baptized with her by the pastor of the church. I pray that all of us have profound experiences as we meet with Jesus today 
as we see him at his trial and as we see ourselves there with him going on trial to set us free. Why don't you pray with me, please? Dear Jesus, we praise you for your selfless love that took you to trial and to the cross. Thank you for forgiving our sins and giving us new life. Please help us to live the abundant life you intend us to live. We thank you. We give you praise. Amen. Well, thanks for being a part of this. Look forward to seeing you tonight at 7 o'clock with Brian English. God bless you.